Look how much better these are looking. Wow, so much better. Still got a little bit of powdery mildew, but not nearly as bad as it was. The advice I received was to spray these with a diluted milk mixture. And I started with 20% and actually bumped it up a little bit after multiple commenters told me to go more to like 40%. It's really working on the powdery mildew. I also did prune the branches of the squash and took out some of the lower branches to provide more airflow and i'm sure that also has something to do with it i wasn't sure there was a it had gotten really bad and i thought that i might end up losing these plants over it but it looks like they're making a recovery and i'm really thankful for that check this out that is my first little okra of the year um i think this is the first one i see on any of the plants it's pretty cool that's a burgundy okra you can see that the weeds are like really sticking out of these. I think with the white fabric, probably it allows some light through so there is still weed growth underneath. Okra is very resilient, so I'm not that worried about it with this. And then they're not so bad sticking out of the squash because the squash is shading it as well. So once these okras get big, those weeds will probably get a little better. Hey, check it out. See the little bees in there doing their job. So I've been having audio issues on my videos for days. Some of you have noticed, um, many of you have noticed. And I was troubleshooting what could be going on. And I started by switching the mic, which didn't help. And then I ch changed a cord, that didn't help. And then I thought, well, maybe it's the memory card and it's not writing fully and it's becoming corrupt. So I switched that. I even switched to my other laptop, my old laptop, just because I wanted it to be anything other than what it actually was. It was actually the camera. Um, and it's okay. Um, I am going to pick up a new camera today and I'm going to send that one off for repair. But uh, I'm actually borrowing my friends, Meg and Ben are here and... Uh, of course, they brought their camera to vlog, and I was like, hey, can I borrow your camera today to shoot my vlog so that I can go pick up my other one this afternoon? It's nice. It was a very good time for our YouTuber friends to be visiting. I ha We have a GoPro. I could have shot a vlog on that, but um, I prefer to use a regular camera. So no more audio issues, thankfully. We've got to the bottom of it, and I'm excited. I'm going to have a new camera, so my videos are going to get even better and then I'll have a nice backup once it's all fixed. Way to spin positivity on it. So I showed yesterday just digging up a few potatoes and got a lot of questions about how we grew potatoes and so that's what I wanted to talk about today and just sort of have a video that we can reference because I really like how this has turned out. So I will tell you that we have some sort of, I actually don't know what this is, maybe somebody can tell me some sort of spot going on. I'm assuming that this is a type of blight or something like that, but I dug up some of the potatoes. They're still on the small side, but they're not damaged, so I'm not stressing out about it just too much. I've grown potatoes before on a smaller scale, and this year was my first year to grow this many at once. And even though we've got that little bit of sickness happening and the blight or whatever it is, I'm absolutely astounded at how well these have done. So I'm just going to tell you what we did. I don't know if this is the exception. We planted all these potatoes on March 26th. Um, so right now we're starting to harvest kind of some, some that are a good size that we can kind of like steal out gently from the root system and then we're leaving the smaller ones, but you can harvest the smaller ones and cook them small, but you just kind of forfeit having larger ones later. And it is now, let's see, yes, I just dug the first ones out yesterday, June 4th. So that's not a very long time for them to have grown this much and produced this much food. We don't have a lot of topsoil where we live. The ground has got a lot of clay and rock in it. What I felt like I needed to do was kind of grow on top of that. And what we did here was we laid 
a layer of cardboard down um, and we actually put it down weeks before we started and we put compost and we just mounded it up in these mounds. I'll post a photo of what this looked like when we first planted it. So it was like three long mounds of compost on top of this cardboard. We did not till, we didn't do anything else like that. And then I planted potatoes throughout that about every 12 inches. Now these two rows um, on this four foot mound, it's three rows of potatoes and they're spaced every 12 inches. Down here on the end, I just wanted to see if it would make a difference and I had less of this kind. And so on this four foot mound, it's only two rows of potatoes. Potatoes come in either indeterminate or determinate, just like how you can get tomatoes. For some reason, a lot of times uh, it's not listed if they're indeterminate or determinate. But just like with anything like that, if you're ever trying to grow a variety of something, specifically something like that, like a potato and you don't know if it's a determinate or indeterminate or a tomato or um, if you've got a bean and you don't know if it's a bush or a pole bean and you're trying to accommodate for it in your garden space based on its growing habit, just Google it. Um, I still regularly Google varieties to find out their growing pattern and I literally just type in like are Adirondack blue potatoes indeterminate or determinate and usually you'll find something pretty high up in the search that answers your question. All three of the varieties that I grew this year are determinate and that's part of the reason why I'm harvesting them so soon because determinate varieties are ready in like 70 to 90 days whereas indeterminate varieties take longer. It's more like um, 120 days. And if you ever like look at those things on Pinterest that tell you to like build a tower and plant potatoes in them and keep mounding up on top of them to keep growing uh, more and more potatoes, the higher they get, you know, you just keep mounding. That works for indeterminate varieties. Like they will keep growing height, but these determinate varieties, they are not going to do that. Just like a determinate tomato, it's, it's only gonna grow a determined height. So that obviously played into how we grew these. Um, we got our seed potatoes from Haas Tools. We grew Adirondack Blue, Austrian Crescent, and French Fingerling. And in these mounds, like this is where I pulled a plant out yesterday. In these mounds that we, we planted and grew, you can see like here's a little plant that um, has probably been really shaded so it hasn't grown and as these big plants die back my hope is is that some of these smaller ones that were a little crowded in will actually take off and we'll still get more potatoes out of them but um you know potatoes are ready when they die back which these really aren't there yet they're just starting to get ready but they'll really start to fall over and die back uh and as of right now like i said we are starting to dig some tubers out now what i did is I actually mounded, like there's a really tiny little one there, but I really, I mounded the straw up on top of the soil here. Okay, there's a pretty decent one. And see, I'm just going to replace that. And this is how I'm harvesting right now, is I'm just going to be kind of gently stealing uh, a few potatoes here and there trying to take the bigger ones out and leave the smaller ones. Even though these are determinate varieties, I did go ahead and mound that straw up. I think I probably put about four good layers of straw mulch around these potatoes. And that wasn't necessarily to try to like stretch the growth out just a ton. It did do that a little bit, but it was also to keep that soil, that compost that I had piled up really loose because whenever you really heavily mulch soil, it's gonna stay nice and loose and moist and aerated. It's not gonna get really compacted and baked in the sun. So it had a really thick layer of mulch. And now like some of these potatoes are kind of growing into that mulch. This was sort of modified off of the Ruth Stout method. So it was literally just doing the rows of mounded compost on top of cardboard, planting the potatoes, most of which I actually planted whole. Some of the bigger ones that I had, I cut into little pieces and let them harden off um, a few days, kind of scab over. Travis from Haas Tools said that if you plant whole potatoes, you're obviously, because they have a lot of different eyes, you're planting multiple plants close together. So you may get more potatoes that way, but you're actually getting 
smaller potatoes whereas if you cut them and you put like one or two eyes on a piece of a potato ever so often however you're going to space them that you actually get larger potatoes that way even though you may end up with less so um, i did some of both with this i did i did some that were whole and some that were cut i actually have never watered this potato patch just because we've had so much rain and i assume that a lot of the sickness that i'm seeing is due to rain uh, and just due to the humidity and moisture but uh, that is that's literally what we did was just compost straw on top of cardboard uh you know 70 or 80 days later we are pulling spuds out of the ground next uh we'll be seeing how these sweet potatoes do this is also a new venture for us to grow sweet potatoes like this on this scale I've got some things coming up in here which I did not uh, plant but this is compost that came from our farm so it probably has a lot of seeds in it just because it is from the garden you can see here check this out in the middle of the um, sweet potato patch there's a tomato plant I kind of just want to let it grow just to see what kind it is probably won't hurt anything here so you can see these are looking really really nice sweet potatoes will ramble they'll just take over this whole place and where they touch down uh they'll grow another you know tuber so i'm just going to give them this space meg and ben are here hey. meeting their pigs yeah, for the first so time <laughs> <laughs> well, she just said they look like lamb chops <laughs> dating myself but yes do. let's not start singing the song that never ends. i sing it to my kids the other day and they're like mom stop <laughs> they feel like an old dirty sheep i know i know people are like can you use the hair i'm like no it's not it's yeah, not woolly at all it's it's like just big thick hair it looks woolly but it actually feels like coarse pig hair when their faces, like when they're young especially they remind me of possums <laughs> yeah, like their pointy like little possums. faces when they're babies, they look a lot like that. <laughs> like, nope. I don't know you, stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> they're feeling lazy on these hot days. Eating. I'm not for eating. <laughs> he likes you. But you like goats, don't yeah, you? I do like goats. <laughs> I've always liked goats. Hi. For you. I, th I do think they know goat people. Like seriously, whatever people are here that like goats, they just go right to them. He's like, you don't like goats. <laughs> <laughs> He's indifferent like goats. I love goats. I've, I've loved goats since I was like three. Isn't he crazy big? He's crazy big. I thought, because Manny just got sheared um, like last week. And Manny looked a lot bigger with all his fiber. Yeah. And then I was like, man, Thorin's almost as big as Manny. And then Manny got sheared. I was like, wow, Thorin's significantly larger than Manny. <laughs> Found a little toad. Cool. Yeah. What do y'all think of my little temporary dining room space out here? I put my plants out on the back porch. All over here with my worm farm. <laughs> so our friends, the haulers are here uh, this weekend they came to pick up their pigs they bought those pigs from us in the winter like right after they were born and the plan was that they were going to pick them up at the shindig but obviously the shindig didn't happen and uh we've not you know been able to get together over the last few months because of covid and all of the restrictions but are now able to they are here this weekend picking up their pigs and taking them back there it's it's time they're getting you know on the big side so that's good it'll be uh two less pigs here on our farm we obviously still have all our other ones but uh they'll be taking this back to their farm in north carolina um they're very dear friends of ours and if you've been with us for very long you've probably encountered them on our videos but i will link them down below if you're not following them we're gonna run inside sweet maya's cooking breakfast so uh that's nice <laughs> y'all all of this is getting torn out Oh, boys with lightsabers. Uh, all this is getting torn out and we're like putting in open shelving here for a big pantry area, which is awesome. We kept our kitchen some functional for this weekend. I feel like taking these cabinets down has already made the kitchen look so much bigger. 
it's really cool. Well guys, we are going to get to breakfast and visiting with our friends, but I'm sure you will see more of this weekend later. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me this morning. I bless you. Until next time.